Welcome to the Start It, Own It, Finish It podcast with Dat Boy Mo 629 Discussing everything fitness and everything motivation. Here is where you will get your fitness education and motivational fix. Now, here's your host, Dat Boy Mo 629 What's good, everybody? And welcome to the very first episode of the Start It, Own It, Finish It podcast with that boy Mo 629. I want to welcome y'all to my show. Thank y'all for tuning in and listening. Now, let's get started. Today's episode is going to be about mental health and mental fitness and how both can contribute to your overall success in physical fitness. Like, too much in fitness, in my opinion, especially on social media, especially on Instagram, is focused on physical fitness. Because it's a picture flat platform, it's all about photos, it's all about the visuals that really don't reflect on the impact that people's mental fitness have on their overall physical fitness. Not too many influencers touch on a mental aspect of fitness which plays a huge part in people either giving up or not trying at all right mental fitness is very crucial to success in the fitness industry period you got to think about the champions in this industry you got to think about the athletes in this industry you got to think about the lebron jameses you got to think about the kobe bryant the greats you got to think about the football players out there. There's a lot of mental aspects that go into their training, that go into their discipline, that just go into their their might and their naught and their, their preparation for the game. Tom Brady. A lot of people hate Tom Brady. Yes. But the man is a dog. Aaron Rodgers. That man is a dog. Stephen A. Smith. That he's the bad man. (laughs) But Aaron Rodgers is a dog when it comes to the mental aspect of the game. If you think about boxers, you think about Deontay Wilder out there. Look at how he walked to the ring. The boy is focused. Mental fitness rules, man. It determines the level of intensity in your training, the discipline and the motivation that you have to train. If you look at Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson, mental fitness, mental capacity. He had he had a mental Ill, Ill, illness, though. And actually, that's a great point right there. Mike Tyson, his mental illness that he had once Cush D'Amato passed away determined his trajectory into his legacy in boxing. Everybody knows Mike Tyson was not the same after Cus D'Amato died. Cus D'Amato was not there to keep him centered, to keep him focused like he was prior to his death, to keep him training like he was prior to his death. He spiraled out of control. So that just goes to show how much mental fitness and mental illness right there can have an impact on your physical abilities. Now, Bruce Lee said it best. The mind is formless, shapeless like water. You put it in a cup, it becomes the cup. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now, I got a video on this too, on YouTube, about Bruce Lee and his motivational skills and his, 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 mental, his mental focus. Now, Bruce Lee was not lying when he said that because at the end of the day, you already know Bruce Lee telling the truth. All these all these people out here that were athletes, that were physical freaks of nature, that are physical freaks of nature would tell you that it, all be, it begins in the mind. You have to be disciplined. You have to be you have to be focused, man. You got to have that internal that internal strength in order to realize your full external strength and your physical capabilities. So when you think about this right here, your mental illness and your mental fitness is key to your overall physical fitness. Now, I have some stats right here in front of me 
in regards to mental illness. Now, mental illness can be disorders, schizophrenia, bipolarism, you know, just just being out of whack. You know what I'm saying? There's medication out there for that, too, where people with those disorders that have been diagnosed by doctors and professionals will go out and get put prescriptions for those mental illnesses. I'm not saying they're natural cures. I don't know if they're natural cures. I'm not a physician. I'm not a medical technician. I am just a fitness coach with a podcast. But here's some mental fitness stats right here in front of me that I have in regards to mental illness. And we need to really shed a light on mental illness, especially with the recent tragedies that happened in uh, El Paso, Texas and Dayton, Ohio. And also in California, we need to really shed some light on mental illness here. Uh, approximately one in five adults in the United States experience me- mental illness within a given year. Approximately one in five youths between the ages of 13 and 18. 16 million had at least one major depressive episode in the past year. An estimated 26% of homeless adults staying in shelters live with serious mental illness and an estimated 46% live with severe mental illness and or substance use disorders. Approximately 12%, 20% rather, of state prisoners and 21% of local jail prisoners have a recent history of a mental health condition. Just over half 50.6% of children with a mental health condition aged 8 to 15 years old received mental health services in the previous year. Now, African Americans and Hispanic Americans each use mental health services at about one half the rate of Caucasian Americans and Asian Americans at about one third the rate. Mood disorders, including major depression, and bipolar disorder are the third most common of hospitalization in the United States for both youth and adults aged 18 to 44. Now, by no means am I, once again, a medical professional or anything like that, but here are some ways that you can help improve your mental fitness. By no means, like I said, this is not a cure-all. This is an assistance This is something that you should try out, maybe to help better your mood if you're feeling down or depressed. Uh, I find, personally, these these are things that I use. I'm not saying I have mental illnesses, but, you know, I do get down in the dumps. I am an aspiring entrepreneur. You get get it in a funk. You get depressed. You get, you know what I'm saying, like you get... At a, in a space to where at a point where you're like, you don't want to do this anymore because you're not getting attraction. But I do these things to help alleviate those, those, those thoughts and feelings. Reading. Reading will sharpen your mind. I always read. I read. I read the thesaurus. I read. I read my Kindle books. So and I read them. I'm, I'm actually reading my NASM books right now, you know, to give me more insight into the fitness industry. And I read... Like I said, I read a lot of Kindle books, and also am a big proponent of audio books. So, I uh, I keep my mind sharp on those, with those, right? Not taking things too seriously. When you take things too seriously, you become more defensive. You become more. You're taking things more personally. Your your anxiety increases. So, and that affects your mood also. You take things too seriously when you should not take them too seriously. You take them personal personally and think everything's about you when it's not about you and that that can affect your mood and how you treat people and how you're around people and how you just you just see people overall and don't take life too seriously you only get one life have fun in it uh focus on one thing at a time focus on one thing at a time a lot of times you know what I'm saying life is very busy uh Things can get cluttered. Things can just happen all at once and overwhelm you. So take things at take things one at a time. Focus on one thing at a time. Separate it. Plan things out. Uh, make tasks out of everything, and keep it on moving. This final thing I really do, and I've always been a proponent of this, and I will recommend it to anyone out there. Positive affirmation, even if it comes from yourself. 
Find something good about you. Find a lot of things good about yourself. And remind yourself, reaffirm yourself that you are worthy, that you are worth it, that you are valuable, that you're you're don't be negative about yourself. Don't be negative on yourself. Don't be hard on yourself all the time. Find good qualities in yourself and highlight them. Remind yourself of them. And also just just positive affirmations. They keep the brightest mind and the most successful people in the world going. Now, the benefits of a great mind, mental fitness, mental health, benefits. You can come up with great ideas. If you have a sharp mind, you come up with great ideas. People can rely on you for those great ideas. You can feel confident in presenting those ideas. Even if an idea fail, still present it like it's a great idea. There's infinite numbers of ideas presented in a lifetime. And there's an infinite number of ideas that are rejected in a lifetime. <laughs> so there are very few ideas that are held on to and considered golden ideas that are successful. But present your ideas. You come up with great solution, problem solving. You can become a problem solver. If you're very confident in your mental health, if you're very, you know, confident in what you have to say to people, that you can help solve a problem. People come to you for advice. You can be more jolly with it. You know, you don't have to be an, an ass about it pretty much. Great navigational skills. You can have great navigational skills. You can be a traveler. You can be a world traveler. Your mental health and your mental capacity. You know how to navigate. You know how to navigate subways. You know how to navigate the highways. You know how to, how to, how to find flights. You know how to find uh, cruise ships. You can be a great traveler. You can be a great, uh, just develop great navigational skills and great processing skills. Who doesn't love a person that can really think things through? And come up with things and be a great inventor or whatever you want to call it. Engineer to have great processing skills. So the mental health can work in ways that are beyond just the physical nature. Think about Stephen Hawkins. He was incapable. He was disabled in a wheelchair, confined to a wheelchair. But his brain still worked kept trucking he still left the impact on his world because of what he gave us with his mind so that's what i mean about your mental health being the number one thing you should worry about work on and improve because once your mental health if you are capable once your mental health is in great shape, you can force your body to damn near do anything. Get in shape, stay motivated, stay disciplined. Stay true to that diet, stay true to that meal plan, and get the results you want. That's what I mean about mental health and mental fitness right there. Get your mental health right so everything else around you can be exactly what you want it to be in your life. Whether you want it to be successful, whether you want to be a cook, whether you want to go to school, whether you want to learn a trade, it doesn't matter what you want to do, whether you want to be an Instagram model or an Instagram star or YouTube star, get your mind right and you'll be able to do whatever you please. Now, thank you for tuning in into the very first episode of the Started on it, finish it, podcast with that boy Mo 629. Until next time, start it, on it, finish it. 
You've been listening to the Start It, Own It, Finish It podcast. Be sure to subscribe to receive new episodes. Link up with Dat Boy Mo 629 on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, or visit him at ace1warrior.com. Until next time, start it, own it, finish it.